Welcome back, friends. Let's paint a rhino today. You're gonna need blue, green, brown, white, black, yellow, and red paints. Don't forget to have a cup of water as well as a paint rag handy to keep your brushes clean. The brushes you're gonna need today are a medium flat brush. I use a 3 4 inch brush as well as a couple of small round brushes. So let's get started. We're gonna make this rhino in the sunset. So I'm gonna be using mostly white paint and horizontal lines. That means, you know, side to side, left to right. And every once in a while, I'm gonna throw just a little bit of red in. I'm gonna paint most of my canvas with this color, leaving about two inches at the bottom for the ground. Making sure before I call this sky finished, I smooth out all of my colors with long brush strokes that go left to right to hide any of those little brush marks. Without washing my brush, I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown paint to my brush and I'm gonna paint everything below that horizon line. Remember, that's the line that separates the sky and the ground with a brown color. my itty bitty brush and some brown paint I'm gonna make a tree and these are gonna be lines that kind of start out as a smash letter Y do you see how the two tops of the Y are smashed and then I'm just gonna keep adding that exact same shape that smashed kind of side where it looks like it's a straw that is slightly tilted over so I'm going at the edge of each branch and then pulling it all the way down to the bottom what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull a little bit of that yellow in to give me some texture of what real tree bark would look like we're making this a short tree because we want it to look like it's from the desert. So as I'm going through, I'm gonna add just a little bit of black paint as well to darken up that tree. Again, starting at the edge of each branch and pulling it down to the base of the tree. With my medium round brush and some white paint, I'm going to lay out what my rhino is going to look like. And it's going to start with a really big circle right in the center of my canvas. This is going to be the rhino's head. Don't worry if a little bit of your tree color gets mixed in. It's not a big deal. After that, I'm going to use that same brush with white paint and I'm going to make an oval at the base. This is that rhino snout where his horn is going to go. Right here, I'm gonna add two little ears. They kind of look like balloons. They're rounder, they're rounder at the top than they are at the base. And then I'm going to lay out where his body's going to go. So right back here, about middle of the head, I'm gonna make a curved line that goes off the canvas, and then just under that snout, a straight line down. Let's not forget about that ever famous horn. So starting with a smiley face right here at the top of that oval, and then I'm gonna pull that smiley face up into a curved triangle. So just a curved line with a point at the top. Again, don't worry if it kind of mixes in with the tree, it's not that big of a deal. Let's add some greenery to our tree. So medium round brush, a little bit of green paint. I'm gonna dab some of that green paint off so that I can make a nice stippling look and just gently kind of tapping around the top of this tree. Um, I like that some of the brown and blacks mixed in. I think it gives it some really nice dimension. If it bothers you, then wait till your painting's totally dry to do this. I'm also going to go through and add some yellow highlights to this so that it looks like there's a little bit of highlight, a little bit of low light, and my desert tree will be finished. Let's mix up a color for our rhino. I'm going to take my blue paint and add some black some white and some green i want my rhino to be a nice grayish teal color mix all that in keep some of it dark and add a little bit of white to the other part of it and we're gonna make his head a little bit lighter than his body with the lighter color i'm gonna color his head his ears and the the snout part of his mouth in
little bit of extra white. I'm gonna go across the top of his head as well as the top of his ears, just to give a small highlight, show that there's some form to this little guy's head. Then with the darker color, I'm gonna fill in his whole body area. fill in that corner of his with a little bit of white paint. I'm not really worried if any of the, the blacks or browns from the tree mix in or even a little bit of the teal because we are going to change this color slightly. Just color that whole thing in with white paint. Let's add just a small amount of his skin color onto here just to kind of take away that, that harsh brightness of that white. So just kind of fill that whole space in with just a small dab of that tealish gray we made. And then add a little bit more white right at the center just to really let that center area pop. Add some clouds before we let this dry. Take your small round brush and kind of flatten those bristles out. And with just a little bit of white paint, you could just tap and dab around to make some clouds in your sky. I like to keep things in the rule of thirds. So, you know, make one or three or five um, clouds. Kind of keep it with those odd numbers. It's a little bit more interesting to look at, but just a little bit of paint on that paintbrush and kind of small little stippling, which means almost stamping motion to make your clouds. With a dry rhino, I'm now gonna make the color for his ear. So I'm gonna take some white and just a dab of red and make a light pink color. This light pink color is gonna go just inside of his ear shape um, to show kind of where the inside of his ear is, where that tender part of the ear is. So by just following the ear shape with that pink color, I'm just gonna fill it in. Again, I'm not worried if a little bit of that teal mixes in. I kinda like my colors mixing together. I'm gonna add the smallest amount of white paint to the top of each of these pink areas just to give it a small little highlight. I really like to water my black paint down just a little bit before I do drawing in, but this is gonna be his nostril. It's gonna be a C shape. 
with a short little line at the top and then opposite on the other side. So a short little line with a backwards letter C is going to be a great nostril shape for your rhino. With that same watered down black paint, we're also going to add in his um, eyebrows. So right up here at the top of his head, I'm going to put one slightly over to that right hand side because you know we are seeing a little bit of a profile of him and the other one a little bit more towards the center of his face. Now, if you've ever painted with me before, you know that I love finger painting. So a little bit of black paint on my finger and I can make a perfectly shaped oval eyeball for my rhino. If your rhino nose is in the way a little bit, feel free to start with your finger and finish off with your paintbrush to make a nice rounded shape. With a clean baby brush, I'm just gonna add a small line and maybe a dot for some highlights on his eyes. Let's add in some final details, a little bit of white paint on my medium round brush to add some highlights. So I'm barely touching the painting. I'm just making some curved lines on his nose, maybe some that go down the front of his face to really show where that, that forehead connects down to that horn, smoothing those out left to right in a curved line. Um, you can add highlights any place you think they need to be, like maybe his back or even the front of his chest. These highlights just really kind of stand out and help your viewers love what they're seeing. Just like we had highlights, we had a little bit of low light. Some small black paint down on the bottom of his chin will really help him uh, come to life. So any place you think you might need to put a little bit of dark lines, maybe the bottom of his, his horn would be a great place to put a small black eye line. And remember, these are almost not touching the canvas. They're almost like ghost lines. So I am loving this rhino. But you know what time it is? It's time to call it finished. So I'm gonna pick a color that's gonna stand out nice on my picture, and I'm gonna sign my name. I like to put my initials in the bottom right corner, but you have to sign your name, what's best for you. Don't forget, the only way I get to see what you're painting at home is if you take a picture and post it to our Facebook page, Painting With Purpose. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Painting With Purpose. And remember, as always, stay kind, stay creative, and stay safe. Have a great day, friends.